love you. Thank you for another Zoom. We have a guest that I am looking forward to getting into his book. This is his latest book, by the way. It says 100 Bible Questions and Answers. His name is Alex McFarland. Uh, he wrote the book along with Bert Harper. So it's like McFar McFarland Harper. It sounds like a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I appreciate you taking your time. Because, where are you right now physically? Well, I'm actually in South Carolina. I'm on the coast at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Been down here speaking in a few places. and Because uh, I love to put ago. where you are up in the corner of on our, on our Zoom. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, Mr. Bailey, I'm very honored to be on with you. And I, I my name, appreciate it, my name is Herman. Herman, thank you, brother. And yeah. thank you for your interest in our book. Uh, it is it, it is anything pertaining to the Word of God, because I read through the Bible. This is my 32nd year of reading wow. through the Bible. And anything pertaining to the Word of God or the Bible or memorization or whatever, I'm there. And, and, and when I started reading this, you're a graduate of Liberty University? Yes, sir. And, and my, my son-in-law graduated Liberty University, Dr. David Anderson. Oh, wonderful. Congratulations. And, and, uh, uh, Ed, Ed, Ed Heinsohn is, uh, yes. is a professor at Liberty, a very yes. close friend of mine. Uh, he's with us almost every year. And, uh, so we have a quite a connection. My daughter met her husband at Liberty and my son went to Liberty. So we got a yeah. family well, thing. Herman, uh, you and I are very much on the same page. I, I got to testify about how good God is. Um, I was engaged. This is uh, back in 1989. A wonderful girl. We've been married now more than 30 years. And uh, I was feeling like God might be calling me to the ministry. I, I got saved when I was in college. I was 21 years old and, um, you know, just was involved in church and um, growing and growing. And I began to feel like God might be calling me to the ministry. I had this great love of God and love of, of evangelism, trying to lead my friends to Christ. And one night I came in really late and I saw an ad for Liberty University and uh, just felt like God was calling me to go there. And when I was there, uh, Ed Heinsohn was there and a lot of wonderful people. But I told my fiance, I said, listen, I need to be uh, transparent with you if, if you marry me. I think you're going to be marrying a preacher. And she said, well, everybody knows that. Everybody at church, we, we know that. So my wife and I got married three months later. We're living in Lynchburg, Virginia. And I ended up doing a, an undergrad and two masters. But um, a huge part of who I am is due to the late, great Jerry Falwell, Liberty University. Yes. And um uh, we love the word of God, too. So I think one of the reasons you and I have kind of bonded is, um, well, I'll put it this way. Psalm 119, verse 93 says, I will never forget thy words, for through them I found life. Wow. And one of the reasons I love the word of God is because that's where I learned about the son of God. And by faith in Jesus, I became a child of God. So you and me have a lot that our heart is united in. Now, you're an apologist. Would you explain what that is? Great question. Well, apologetics is defending the Christian faith. First Peter 3.15 says, be ready always to give an answer to everyone who asks a reason for the hope that you have. So uh, an apologist is one who equips people to defend the Christian faith. And uh, Herman and I, I travel a lot. I've, I've been a youth pastor. I've been a pastor but I've spoken at about 200 American universities. In fact, a week ago today, I was at uh, East Tennessee State University, Johnson City, taught, and in that context, talking about America. Now, these and are the, secular the, universities. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So a lot of times I'll go and I'll debate an atheist in love, uh, but we're trying to evangelize the lost and equip the saved. Yeah. Amen. That's what well, you, you know, your, your bio says he is the only evangelist to have preached in all 50 states in only 50 days. Yep, we did that. So actually, 64 services, 50 states, 50 days, 64 services. I was in when I was in Florida, of course, I've been to Florida dozens of times, but during the 50 state tour, we were in Tallahassee. Uh, Reverend Doyle Bell at, um, I believe it was called Calvary Baptist. 
but it was a very, very large church in Tallahassee. And so, hey, you, you know, listen to this. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says, God gave to the church pastors, teachers, and evangelists for equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. And so for 24 years, we started a ministry called Truth for a New Generation, TNG, Truth for a New Generation. By the way, we're going to have all your info on the screen while you're talking. Wonderful. But uh, we, we do a live show. Some of your viewers might have heard it. It's called Exploring the Word. And Bert Harper and I, he's a pastor as well. We've been on the radio about 11 years. Is he as smart and, as you? Oh, hopefully he's way smarter. Listen, and I understand he was a pastor for almost 40 years, right? Yeah, wonderful guy. I mean, oh my goodness, Bert is such a godly man and brilliant. But um, on the show, like right now, we're teaching through the book of Galatians. For oh, I 30 love Galatians. Minutes. I love Galatians. Oh, yeah. We, we teach the Bible, then we take calls for 30 minutes. And in 10 years, Herman, we've, we've led people to Christ on the air. I mean, it's just been amazing. And so we have- I, I, wish, I, could, I wish I could Zoom, you know, just come in on your environment. Oh. While you and Bert are, are doing this and, and have that as one of my total standalone programs. Oh, we'd love to do it. And Bert and I, we'll, we'll come on and, and you can interview us. But um, hundreds of callers over the last 11, 12 years, they said, oh, please, you ought to do a book. So what we did, the book you hold in your hands there, we just took the top 100 questions wow. from the first 10 years of exploring the word. And we did our best to give an answer. Let me break away just a moment because you have sections one through 12 and you have a section like the Bible. Uh, uh, you have uh, Bible uh, contradictions. I, I guess you get a lot of that when you have callers calling yeah. and, and coming up with ideas of how do we know the Bible? Why is there uh, no additional Bible uh, additions, you know, like it's Genesis through Revelation. Nothing has been added since then. All of those, I'm sure you could, and you talk about questions about God, questions about the Holy Spirit, questions about worldview, uh, New Testament question, questions about Jesus, questions about salvation, uh, sexuality, uh, and, the, and the gender that's happening today. I, I mean, that has to be a wide open one. Questions about oh church goodness. and Christian living, questions about end times. So, you have compiled this as a result of your of your radio program. Right, right. And in fact, you know, I've kept pretty copious notes over the years, but um, Bert and I, we probably worked 10 or 11 months on this book wow. and it came out October 12th of 2021. So it really is fresh research and uh, we're, we're pretty excited about it. Um, Matt, let me give you one example of just the gold mine that is the Word of God. And you and Amen. I are definitely on the same page on this. Amen. But, uh, you know, John 10, 35, Jesus said the Scripture cannot be broken. Isn't that something? Yes. The people ask me, Herman, they'll say, Alex, come on, do you really believe the Bible is the literal Word of God? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I've had... In fact, I had an atheist friend. He, he worked for a petroleum company. He was a geologist. He was an atheist. And he came to me one time. He said, Alex, you know, you're, you're educated. And you're, you're an intelligent guy. Do you Come on, do you really believe the Bible is the, the true word of God? Absolutely. My, my friend later became a born-again believer, and he teaches college Sunday wow. school in Texas now. Wow. But Herman, the Bible is the word of God. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 35, uh, the Lord said, heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. The Bible was true. The Bible still is true. A thousand years from now, the Bible will still be true. The you, Bible well, is the word of God. Alex, you, you know, in, in, in Tampa, uh, Florida Bible Institute, uh, yeah. where Dr. W.T. Watson, T. W., T., actually T.W. Watson was sure. the founder and president there. And Billy, when he attended that college, in, yeah. in Tampa, he walked the golf course. There was one. In fact, the, the building was the was the uh, kind of the center for the golf course, you know, where, where they come in and register. It was sure. a golf course at one time. And a very wealthy man allowed uh, Dr. Watson to use that and to own it with no interest for the next, I think, for the first 10 years, no interest on anything. Wow. And so Billy walked that golf course because he was being hit by is the Bible 
really the word of God. And he said that he wrestled with God on that air on that golf course, laying down, I think on, on one of the, one of the holes and just crying out to God, you've got to show me, is this really your word? And he settled it there. And can you imagine from there to what we've experienced? And he just passed away recently at almost a hundred. Oh, I know. Well, you know, uh, of course, in the ministry, one of my absolute heroes is Billy Graham. You know, Herman, I'm from North Carolina, and uh, Billy Graham is definitely North Carolina's most favorite son. And and I do think God used him to change the world so significantly for a lot of reasons. Yeah. He and his wife, Ruth, were people of absolute integrity. Yes. And uh, it's my joy. I'm, I'm pretty close friends with Will Graham the son of Franklin Graham. Yes. And uh, oh my goodness, just think about this. Here's a message I would love to give your viewers. Every one of us, number one, the most important call of life is to be saved. And to everyone watching this program, I would say, if you've never put your faith in Jesus, obviously the most significant Amen. thing of Amen. your entire life is that you say, dear Lord Jesus, save me, forgive my sins. And the Bible promises that whoever comes to Christ, he will not reject. That's John 6, 37. Alex, isn't it wonderful to know that you can't come to Christ unless he draws you? Amen. So anybody Amen. that tuned in on this telecast, he drew them to this program. Amen. And, and if, if they heard what you just said and have that inkling, you know what? I haven't done that. That's the Holy Spirit drawing them to Amen. himself. And, yes. and, and I mean, I mean, it's, it is so amazing. I'm reading a book right now, Saturdays with Billy. A preacher. Oh, by Don Wilton. Yeah, yes. And, and I mean, I'm going through and it. It is just because I love everything about Billy Graham. I mean, I got him in my library. here. I have a whole section over here, nothing but his books and his past. And, and it is amazing. I get encouragement just reading that book from oh, his yeah. pastor that would drive to his home and they would just, like we're talking right now, just oh, yeah. talking together. Yeah, you know, Don Wilton is, is a friend of mine. He's the pastor at First Baptist Spartanburg, South Carolina, and he was kind of Billy Graham's pastor and a uh, very fine, godly man. But you, you know what's amazing about Billy Graham, uh, folks? God used him. And there was a time in the early 70s, now this is amazing, that like one out of every 10 humans on the planet had heard him face to face. I mean, he spoke to like 250 to 300 million people. And at a time when the world population was, you know, two and a half, three billion people. I mean, you think about this, folks. And, and I, Herman, I don't think this will ever be repeated. It can't but be. like one tenth of the human race had seen Billy Graham face to face. Yeah. And I would tell you why God used him. For one thing, he was a very pure vessel. Yeah. Everybody, and I've, I've, I've met George Beverly Shea, T.W. Wilson, yeah. Cliff Barrows. Uh, I've I've personally talked literally dozens of people that knew Billy Graham, and they said he was just the most godly, purest soul you'd ever meet. You know what is but, amazing? Guys like that, they don't know who they are. I, I know, I know. Very humble, very humble. Yeah. And you know what? Um, listen to this. I I interviewed a guy that had organized one of the crusades years ago. Billy Graham was, I think, in Greenville, South Carolina. They're at the Clemson football stadium, and there's you know, 50,000 people. Well, Sandy Patty was out there singing and Billy Graham was coming around backstage going up some steps. And, you know, like a third of the audience could see there's, oh my goodness, here comes Billy Graham. Well, everybody starts applauding. And they said, Billy Graham was looking around like, oh my goodness, who came in? Well, it was him. <laughs> he was so humble. That, that, that describes who he is. Yeah, but you know what? He was very pure, very humble unswervingly committed to the message of Jesus. Yeah. But here's the other thing, and, and I want to challenge everybody watching to make this same commitment. Billy Graham had absolute trust in the Word of God, and you and I can too. Um, Herman, I've spent the last 30 years, and I, I give God the glory, um, I've written 18 books. I've, I've been to five continents. Do you know how you know uh, how blessed you are to have the mind God has given you? Uh, well, the Lord is good. I, I give God the praise. Uh, but you know what? Everything I've researched for 30 years, uh, 50 states, 200 universities. I, 
I have been to the library at 200 American universities. I enjoy research. It was my joy. I give God the praise, but I've interviewed Chuck Colson and James Stops. I work for James Stops. Here's my point. And I, we've led tours to the Holy Land. I've visited 72 biblical sites in Israel and the Middle East. You're blessed. Here's what I'm saying, folks. Everything I've ever researched has only reaffirmed reaffirmed yeah. my conviction yeah. that the Bible is the true word of God. This you can it. trust it. Yeah. You can believe it. Nothing I've ever researched has led me to doubt or question. Friend, the Bible is God's word and you can depend on it. You know, Alex, sometime when I'm, you know, we all have bad days, days of pressure, especially in TV. I've been done it for 42 years. And when I start praying many times, I reach for my Bible as I, and I literally hold on to it just like this while I'm, while I'm praying. Cause it, it just, it, not, not that it's a crutch or anything, but it just feels like there's power there. Amen. And, and your book reflects that when, when people get this and go through every page, that's what you're doing. You are taking the word of God inerrant God's word Yes. And telling it again, but yes. in a way that captures your attention. Amen. Amen. Well, and you know, folks, um, the Bible has a main message. The core message of the Bible is the Lord Jesus and how you can know him. And I just want to say to everybody that might possibly see this, um, Herman, if I could put this on a billboard on every street in America, I would I would say that Jesus Christ loves you. To everybody listening, Jesus really honestly loves you, and he legitimately offers you complete forgiveness. He offers you a fresh start. And the way that you uh, make this real in your life is, is so easy, honestly. First of all, we need to admit that we're a sinner. Yes. And the Bible says that we our sins separate us from God. Yes. Even in spite of our sin, God loves you. And uh, Jesus, the Son of God, went to the cross, and the appropriate measure of God's wrath that I deserve, that we all deserve, was poured onto Jesus. Yes. And everybody watching this, I want to say this, folks. Jesus is as close by as a prayer. Yeah. And if you simply say, Dear Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my sins, but I do believe that you died on the cross for me, yes. and I accept that you paid for my sins, Lord Please forgive me. Please save me. Do you know if people call on Christ even right this minute, yes. he has promised. And remember, God can't lie. Yes. But uh, I could give you some uh, John 6, 37, John 6, 40, 1 John 5, 13. Jesus said, if you call on my name, I will save you. And Herman, I just believe there's somebody even right now today, that this is the day God is drawing you to Christ. Yes. So call on his name and be saved. Amen. You know, you, what you just said, that prayer is similar to what I prayed in 1958 in a chapel in Trinity College in Clearwater, Florida. T.W. Wilson was speaking, Billy Graham's right-hand guy, and I gave my life to Christ. And I mean, it was revolutionary. I mean, it's, and here I am, 83 now. That's when, that's when I was... 18 Amen. and now i'm 83 and still the same message that you just gave Amen. is the very message that changed my life Amen. and would you agree honestly folks and this is no cliche but jesus is sweeter with every passing day isn't he oh i mean i mean this morning very early i get up early and i was walking out where we live and looking up and I first thing I said, I just look up and said, Lord Jesus, thank you for allowing me to stand under your canopy. Amen. I mean, Amen. that that sky above me, everything has to be exact and everything has to be perfect in perfect order, or I would be a fried like a like like one of those uh one that you put in a in in in, in a fire and spray it with the 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 fuel so that a you can cinder. have a barbecue. I would yeah. look like that brick if yeah. everything wasn't just perfectly in order. Yes. And so we serve a Christ that never makes a mistake, that is perfect in every decision he makes, 
And even if we don't understand it, the first when I, I mean, there's many things that happen over these 83 years. And I go, Lord, I just don't, I don't get that. I don't, I don't understand why you did that because it looks like this would have been the best way to get. And then I'm always reminded he's never made a mistake. Like the politicians, they say something and have to go back and retract it. Yeah. Jesus Christ, God's son, never retracted ever and never will and never has to. Amen. Well, let me ask you this, and you've been a Christian a little bit longer than me, but um, the Bible teaches one day Christ will return. I, I believe that. Amen. I, That's you know, the blessed I, hope. It, it is. It's it's funny. Um, I was in uh, New York City being interviewed by, um, well, I'll tell you, John Stossel. Of, wow. of, we were at Fox. I've interviewed him. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice guy, um, very intelligent guy. Tell, tell, tell about his life. Yeah. Well, you know, um, to my knowledge, he has not become a believer yet. Yeah. Um, but I got to share the gospel with him. But he asked me off record, uh, the cameras had stopped. And he asked me, he said, uh, do you really believe Jesus is literally gonna, going to come back one day? And I said, I absolutely yeah. do, yeah. John. I, I absolutely believe yeah. that one day, the Lord Jesus Christ will return and history will come to an end. Yeah. And I said, look, God has a really good track record of keeping yeah. his promises. And so just as Jesus came the first time, Galatians 4, 4 says in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. Amen. I said, yes, I absolutely believe Christ is coming back. Yeah. Yeah. And again, to all of your listeners, I want to say this, that you can be ready. Yes. And and as Herman said, that the return of Christ is is the blessed hope. It's a wonderful promise. Amen. Amen. And Herman, do you think that? By, by the way, the let world, me just let me, the, the John Stossel you're talking about. I did not interview my my at my age many times when I heard that name, it it stuck because I interviewed one almost the same name. So I'm sorry about that. That's okay. But um, would you agree? Maybe although no one knows the day or the hour, but we may very likely be near the return of Christ. Well, it's amazing. You know, when I was a little boy, born and raised in Kentucky, and, and this lady that took care of me, part of my childhood bringing, my parents were gone, and, and she would say that Jesus is coming back. And I don't, and that was during the time when the sky turned blood red. I read that recently. That was a many years ago and it turned blood red. And I asked the lady that was taking care of me as a little boy, I said, what does that mean? She said, Jesus is coming back. So isn't it interesting? A little boy, I was probably no more than four, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm seeing that and she's telling me, and here I am 83 and I'm still waiting for the same Christ that she said, he's coming back. And he yeah. really is because time with him, it isn't yeah. like the time we have. Amen. But, and you know what? He wants everybody to be ready. And that's why it's imperative. If you've never trusted Christ, that you, you do that. Today is now, the day. Uh, exactly. We have no guarantee of tomorrow. Um, people ask me, sometimes they'll call, they'll say, look, you know, will, will this or that send me to hell? Uh, and I said, I'll tell you what will send you to hell. And that's procrastination. Amen. And, and I think Amen. there are probably a lot of people that went into eternity yeah. unprepared. Yes. And they maybe they had thought, well, I'll get around to that yeah. one day. Uh, look, you have right now. Um, we, we don't even know if we have tomorrow. Look, I don't know if I'll be here in 12 hours. That's right. But friend, you have right now. So we wrote this book, Herman, 100 Bible Questions and Answers. And, and listen, I give God the glory. If I could share my own website, which is alexmcfarland.com, you can find on all the major booksellers and the Christian bookstores, all of my books. I'm on the road traveling quite a bit, but um, I'm going to be, you mentioned Billy Graham, The Cove, Billy Graham's uh, conference center. I'll be there July 8 through 10, teaching through the book of First Peter. Oh, that, but, must be a, that must be a dream to arrive there and to walk in that building. Oh my goodness. So time is short and we've got to, we've got to spread the message. You know, I, I had all of these notes, Alex, look at that from your book. God bless you. Thank we've you. Gotten, so much. We've gotten to very little, <laughs> but, but you know, to, to meet you for the first time, this is our first meeting yes. to meet you for the first time. Isn't it amazing? Brothers in Christ, you feel like you have known them from birth. Amen. Amen. It's just I, amazing. I feel that bond with you. 
Uh, let me share. Could I take one minute and share one other exciting thing? You, you've got do? three minutes. Oh, wow. Well, um, I, I speak every year in front of thousands of teenagers, and we share the gospel, and, and we do that, and we give God the praise. We've seen God act in the life of a lot of young people. But, you know, with so much going on with our nation, and now, Herman, we've got socialism and Marxism yes, and, yes. and all this stuff. Well, we started some clubs, and, and they're called Viral Truth. Now, you know, it's like it, kids will say, okay, this, this video went viral. Yes. Well, Viral Truth Clubs, it doesn't cost anything. And we're chartering several clubs a week now. Now, how, they, how can they plug into that? Just email me, alex at alexmcfarland.com. My name is super easy, alex at alexmcfarland.com. What we do in the school year, well, there's 15 weeks in the fall, 15 weeks in the spring. If people email me, we're praying that we could get 50 new clubs chartered before school starts in August. So email me, alex at alexmcfarland.com. My staff and I will coach you through how teenagers, college kids, can reach their friends for God and country. Hey, Herman, not only do we talk about Jesus and Christianity, we talk about America, why you need to love this nation and stand for truth. So we'll help you do that, kids. You know, I, th I often think of our founding fathers. You've seen that picture, but they actually put together the Constitution. I've read this because, you know, theologians really understand how the Constitution was put together. They put that together on their knees with a Bible open. They did. And when we see what is happening today in D.C., Washington, it has got to be an affront to the power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Greater is he that is in the world. Isn't that right? The, yeah, uh, greater is he that is in us than he that, is in, the he world. that is in the world. Because the, the one in the world, that's where man is following. But the Holy Spirit, if you know Christ as Savior, he now resides in you and you're the hope of glory through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? It is. You know, the book of Habakkuk in the Old Testament written about 450 years before the birth of Christ, maybe 500 years BC. But Habakkuk says there's a day coming. Oh, I love this. It says when the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Amen. That day is coming soon. And each of us, we can know Christ and we can make him known. If you trust Christ, it's that easy. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, the Bible says you will be saved. That's the word of God. That's powerful. So if you just confess him today, you can trust him and he will never leave you. He will never forsake you because this says he is the answer. God bless. Bye-bye.